Hebrew fans. I appreciate that. Uh, really proud of our uh, freshman, uh, Reese and uh, Harry. Really played great in the second half. Um, and, a, and then our upperclassmen turned it on. And, uh, we scored 52 points in the second half after a very uh, way below average first half. Uh, we, uh, we were tended up on offense, uh, couldn't make a shot, and, and then we didn't defend very well. We gave them 18 points in the paint. And I know Isaiah Mobley was out. He gives us size and length in sides. So we're playing more, more uh, uh, guards and forwards with, with our two uh, centers. But uh, I thought defensively in the first half, we gave them way too many shots at the rim. Uh, with our guards getting blown by and there's no rim protection. So uh, second half we had to go to a zone after we got down 13 and uh, I thought we did a much better job of protecting the lane and also going to three point line and helped us get back in the game. With or without Isaiah, was it your intention to come out in that 2-2-1 to start the game? Yeah, we, we wanted to press. The problem was that we weren't making any shots. You can't get into press unless the ball goes in the basket. And we, weren't, we didn't get to the foul line a lot early. So, yeah, our, our goal was to try to speed the tempo up a little bit, get us, try to get us out in transition with uh, some deflections, and, and uh, but we, we just couldn't make a shot. And, and so it's hard, you can't press unless you make a shot. On paper, this would have looked like a good game to kind of get back to playing a complete 40 minute game of basketball. Just kind of what's the level of frustration that the team wasn't able to Well, we didn't expect out. Isaiah Mobley to, to be out. He broke his nose in the Arizona game, he's day to day. And we told him to stay home and just rest. It's important for him to get healthy. And uh, so that was the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, there's no excuse for how we played in the first half. Uh, when a guy goes out, everybody needs to uplift each other, and someone's got to step up. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we didn't have that until the second half. And then a lot of guys stepped up and played great. So uh, I'm very encouraged with how we battled. We're down 13 and came back and, and won a very important game because uh, obviously if you lose this game, it, it hurts you. Uh, we're 20-4 and four right now. And it's a long season. And if you look at everybody's schedule, you don't play great every game. Uh, and, and tonight, we played one half really well and the other half not so well. So uh, we are encouraged with our, our, uh, some of our um, veterans that, that performed. And then our two freshmen were great. I'm sure you guys felt like you let that game in Arizona get away from you. you know, five minutes, 50 seconds left, you're tied. And you go, what, one for 15 down the stretch. And it seemed like maybe it carried over into this game. Do you find the players were maybe hesitant to shoot the ball? I a thought bit? they were very hesitant. Some some guys were hesitant to shoot the open three. Some guys uh, were, were penetrating and, and and just their decision making was whether shooting off balance or passing the ball to the wrong team. It was it just didn't we, we didn't look like the team that played uh, a very good offensive game against there. Even the shots we missed in the last six and a half minutes, we we, we got open looks. You know we forced a couple, but uh, if you remember, it was. Uh, uh, we were down two coming out of the media timeout. We ran a, a play, a three, 340 left, and, and Isaiah, Ethan made a great pass to Isaiah in the corner, he missed a three. Uh, Drew gets a rebound, gets a shot blocked, the ball gets, we make two passes, Drew missed a wide open three, no one in 15 feet of him, get a, a third offensive rebound, and then Boogie gets it off a flare screen and misses another wide open three. So, so when you miss four shots in one possession, you're down two to Arizona with three minutes left, you gotta make one of those shots. Because now, now we take the lead and, and now it's, uh, uh, we have the momentum back. Uh, so, so I thought uh, the beginning of tonight felt like the last few minutes of the Arizona game when, when we had good looks uh, and, and we just, just couldn't, could not make the shots. And, and, uh, uh, but I did see some tentative uh, players out there and, and uh, we tried to encourage them at halftime that uh, you're, you, you can't play tentative in this game of basketball. You have to be aggressive. You have to uh, trust your skill set, your decision making, and go play basketball. At, at what point did you decide to, to throw Harrison out there and see what he can do? Well, Harrison's an outstanding basketball player. We, we know that. He, he hasn't played a lot this year because he's playing against uh, behind Isaiah Mobley, who happens to be one of the best players in the country. So uh, when we were down 17 and, and our starters weren't making shots, we had to go change it up. And, and he, he's really improved his shooting this year. He's so smart. He had six rebounds, nine points in 14 minutes. And he was the key to the game. He was just outstanding. What was the reaction to the um, to the uh, veteran players when they see Harrison make those three three pointers and they've been struggling to shooting? So what was their reaction? Yeah, I, I think it, look, everybody loves Harrison, so I think everybody's <laughs> excited for him. Uh, we're, we're 24 games into the season, we're 20 and four, so uh, I'm sure they were very happy for Harrison. They're probably a little disappointed in how they played, uh, but at the same time, 
Uh, we have really good chemistry in this team. They cheer for each other. And, and to see Harrison not play at all barely this year and then come out and do what he did tonight, I think everybody had a big smile on their face. Do you think he could be someone who can earn some minutes with his ability to space the floor? Oh, sure, sure. He, uh, um, we always knew, as we talked to the staff, we, there's no hesitation to put him in games because no game is too big for him, no moment. He, he, he performs in practice. He's improved dramatically offensively, defensively throughout our season in practice. And, and so we, we, we have 100% confidence in him to put him in any game, in any situation, because he's, he's so smart on both sides of the ball. Um, and, and so if, if uh, we need him uh, again, I'm sure he'll get in there. Uh, but but uh, th this is a, a big confidence boost for, for him personally, but also for our team. When he's in the game, we know we can rely on him. How do you feel about the team's rebounding today? Oh, it was terrible. We had three off four offensive rebounds. One was a team rebound when they tipped out of bounds. So uh, that's uh, our, our forwards and guards just, just didn't go. It, it was like we were – in the first half, we stood around and watched a shot. And Chavez was the only guy to go to boards. Josh Morgan once or twice. But uh, uh, we need a team rebound. That's been a strength. I think we've out-rebounding most of the teams we've played this year. And without Isaiah, uh, he, he means a lot. But still, we, we, we need more activity out of our, uh, our wings and forwards. Guys 6'7", 6'8", 6'9". They need to go in there and tip balls. So as I said, the Arizona, the, that Arizona possession was three out of the media timeout, the under four-minute timeout. We had three offensive rebounds in one possession. Tonight we had three in the whole game. So that goes to show you. What do you say to the team before the, after this game going into a big game against UCLA? Well, we, we, we haven't uh, begun to prepare for UCLA yet. That'll start tomorrow and, and the next day. And, uh, but everybody knows what this game means. It's a rivalry game. It's at home. And uh, we're 20 and 4, and, and they're 16 and 4 going into tonight's game. So. Two good, two ranked basketball teams, the city of Los Angeles, and, and uh, it'll be a fun atmosphere. I'm uh, looking forward to it. As, as a coach, would you have preferred five days of practice, or would you prefer this game in between? No, we, we, we tried. Uh, the reason we scheduled this game, we had to wait for the Pac-12 to uh, see what makeup games. If you remember, we had some COVID uh, games we had to make up, Arizona, Arizona State, uh, Stanford, et cetera. So we had three makeup games, and, and we couldn't schedule games we couldn't schedule a, a, a 31st game, which is our full schedule, until uh, we found out when we played those teams. Then we did, and then this week we had the off week, uh, meaning there's no game midweek here because UCLA's a rival, and we thought we needed a game instead of sitting around for five days, six days, and, and preparing, or really, yeah, it'd be a six-day break between um, uh, the Arizona game. And It's hard to practice for six days at this point in the season, and, and, and we thought we, first of all, we wanted to fill our schedule out, because we lost the Oklahoma State game. And, uh, and, and we wanted to play during this week. And Pacific needed a game as well, so it worked out well. So it wasn't like, uh, it, it just, for, for both programs, it worked out. The timing uh, was beneficial. And, and I would do it again, I think, even though we didn't play great uh, in the first half. Uh, I, I think it's important for our players to, to play a full schedule because the last two and a half years, we've been shortened seasons with the COVID. Uh, we missed four games last year, and then in the previous year, we missed the tournament and the uh, Pac-12 tournament, the NCAA and the Pac-12 tournament. So we, we like to fill our schedule out because these kids deserve it. They, they, they uh, try to play as many games as we can under the rules and, and, and go from there. Thanks, Andy. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.